feet. This week's guests, Ernie Williams and the Wildcats, Shabon Quinn and Ben Murray, and author columnist Don Wilcock. Now, here's your host, Rick Bedrosian. Howdy, buckaroos, and welcome to Upbeat. Today we have author Don Wilcock, Ernie Williams and the Wildcats, and Siobhan Quinn and Ben Murray. Roll them!
Three things to look for when you buy a bass. One thing is being easy to play. It shouldn't be really hard to press the strings down. You can uh, adjust the bridge, um, but you don't want to adjust it too low so it might buzz. And some basses just are really hard to play. I would stay away from them. Pick up something that's easy to play. And uh, the second thing is make sure there are no dead spots on the neck. Play the bass, plug it in, and play all the strings all the way up and down the neck. They should all be a, approximately the same volume. You can make up for that a little bit with the pickups, adjusting those, but some basses, just because no two pieces of wood are the same, um, no two basses are the same, and some basses just have dead spots in the neck, and I would stay away from those. If um, I would always say buy a used instrument too and try and rent it um, for a night and take it out if you're in a band already take it out to a gig or uh, take it home and show it to somebody else that knows how to play and uh, usually they'll credit the night's rental towards your purchase price if you uh, decide to get it. Anyway, the third thing about the bass is it should be in tune all the way up the neck. In other words, if you play a G down here and then play a G up here, it should be in tune all over the, you know, all over, there, there, G there, and um, you can, what you can do is take a guitar tuner, and if it's not um, correctly intonated, what you do is you play the open string, say this is E, play the open string, get that in tune, and then press down on the 12th fret, which is an octave higher, and when you press down on the 12th fret, that should be in tune at E also. If it's sharp, you move the bridge back, if it's flat, you move the bridge up, and make sure that if it's not already intonated in the store, they do it for you or bring somebody that knows how to do it. And if they can't, if they can't get it intonated, then don't buy it because it's probably not any good. You know you should watch this show because it's very low in cholesterol. If I had my way, if I had my way, if I had my way, 
tear this building down Tear this building down Sat down on Samson's knee So tell me where the strength lies If you please Woman talks so fine The woman talks so fine Samson told mama Just cut off my head Then she in my head As clean as your hand and Then I'll be a natural man Well they took old Samson By surprise Picked up a stick and poked out his eyes. Carried him down to the judgment hall. And chained him to that stone cold wall. And left him there till his head grew down. Left him there till his head grew down. Left him there till his head grew down. Samson tore that building down. If I had my way. 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 Okay, today on Upbeat, Don Wilcock is here with us, and Don, you do so many things, I'll let you tell the audience what it is you do. We well, said we only had five minutes, so I don't know. <laughs> well, right. I'm a music critic for the uh, record newspaper in Troy, New York, and uh, I have articles on blues printed in national magazines like King Biscuit Times, Blues Access, and Living Blues. Uh, probably best known as the uh, author of Damn Right I've Got the Blues, the authorized biography of Buddy Guy, which is now in its second printing and uh, soon will be out in a Japanese edition. And uh, when I'm not doing that, I uh, am on the air on WXLE. I have two shows on Sunday night, called, one called Roadhouse, where I play raunchy rock and roll and blues, and the other is called Backstage Pass, where I interview uh, national touring acts and uh, have local bands on performing live in all genres of music, not just blues. Now, I heard you on WGY, too, on 81. You do a little... I do a, a Thursday afternoon drive time with uh, Jack Riccardi, where I preview events that are happening for the week. So you're keeping a little busy there. It's, it's, uh, sometimes I don't know which hat to put on. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, today, put your blues hat on, because today uh, the show is basically focusing on the blues, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about the blues. Uh, some of the audience might not be as familiar, of course, as you are, but um, the blues is basically an American art form, correct? It really is. It developed out of the field hollers and uh, the music of the slaves, that, uh, and they brought some of the instruments over from Africa. Africa, and when they were slaves in the uh, 1800s, they were not allowed to communicate with one another 
the way you and I do, just talking to one another. So they developed songs that would uh, be signals to each other, and tell each other stories that they wanted to. And out of that uh, came the, the rural southern blues tradition that was first uh, recorded in the 20s and the 30s on what they then called race records. And then a lot of the blacks uh, migrated up into Chicago and when they played the bars in Chicago they amplified their instruments in order to reach the kind of audience that would be voiced, you know, boisterous and drinking and having a good time on a Saturday night and that developed into the Chicago style blues and then of course that blues in turn influenced a lot of the rock guitar that we hear today. But if I'm not mistaken, the night that Stevie Ray Vaughan died, he, Buddy Guy was there with Eric Clapton and several others. Is there anything about that in the book? Oh yeah, there's a whole chapter about it in the book. In fact, I was in Chicago at the time trying to interview Eric Clapton for the second time for the book. And I had been uh, waiting patiently for Eric's secretary to set up this interview for days and uh, the night was coming around to this particular performance and I had a decision to make. You know, what was I going to do that night? Because Alpine Valley is about an hour and a quarter drive from Chicago, but by helicopter it's uh, less than a half an hour. And I knew that Buddy and Eric were going to go on a helicopter to get to Alpine Valley because there was only one entrance in and out of Alpine Valley. And I was speculating that maybe if I could get the two of them together in the helicopter that we'd have a great interview and an exchange back and forth. Um, as luck would have it, uh, I had tried to set up another interview with uh, Robert Cray that night and that didn't happen and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to decide well, what am I going to do this night and Buddy's manager came up to me, Marty Salzman, and said well you know if we stay right here in Chicago we can go see another one of Buddy's favorites, Carlos Santana and then we'll be right in Chicago so that when they come back on the helicopters if they come into Buddy's nightclub legends we'll be there to catch the spontaneity of that jam which is they've been known to do. Eric Clapton when he comes into the country loves to jam with Buddy in an informal setting at uh, a nightclub and it become, it's become harder and harder as he's become better and better known to, to pull that off. So I decided to stay in Chicago instead of trying to arrange this, this ride on the helicopter and what of course happened was that uh, there were several helicopters that took off that night and the one that had Stevie Ray Vaughan in it hit the side of a mountain and crashed. Yeah, that was bad. Um, Okay, um, if people who aren't maybe familiar with blues, um, what would you recommend? Are there any records that are out now, any CDs that you would say, just to get started, pick these up, check this out? Uh, obviously, Buddy's got some great stuff. <clears throat> well, I think the best Buddy Guy album actually is an older album that he cut uh, when he was in France called Stone Crazy that's been re-released on Alligator. Um, that shows the kind of energy that he has in live performance, which uh -huh. has never been captured on any of his other albums, although the two Silvertone albums, Damn Right I've Got the Blues and Feels Like Rain, are both excellent albums and more contemporary. I think Stone Crazy is probably the most representative for him. Uh, as far as uh, other albums, uh, blues is, a, is really quite a varied music. So if you want to hear acoustic blues, somebody like uh, a Robert Johnson is, is an excellent place to start. A more contemporary, uh, there's a new artist out on Epic called Keb Mo who's a uh, really fine acoustic artist. Um, if you're into the more rock-oriented electric guitar, there's an artist from Australia, uh, David Hole, who's on again on Alligator okay. Records, who's real fiery electric guitarist. He's a great one to listen to. Um, and I would recommend that people who listen to the rock artists look for the blues cuts on the rock albums, find out who wrote them, and then go find the, the originals of those same songs. Led Zeppelin, for instance, did a lot of stuff by Sonny Boy Williamson, believe it or not. And uh, McKinley Morgenfeld, if you see him on an album, that's Muddy Waters. <laughs> right, I've seen those names on Allman Brothers songs. Yes, Allman Brothers uh, take a lot from the blues. That's great. Now, uh, what, what do you have coming up in the future? Any kind of uh, inter interviews or shows you're putting on? Or oh, every week there's, there's something new. Whoever's coming into town, uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, there yeah. are new interviews happening uh, all the time. Blues is a very exciting medium right now. Uh, it's probably more popular than it's ever been. 
it used to be the uh, poor man's music, and uh, it still is in terms of how much money I think the artists make, but it seems to be becoming more and more popular with people. So there's all kinds of acts that are coming up in the fall, and people should uh, check out my column in uh, the Troy Record on Thursdays, and tune in on Sunday nights on WXLE for both Roadhouse and Backstage Pass, and we talk and play the music of the acts that are going to be in town. Great. Well, thanks, Don, for being on Upbeat, and uh, we'll see you next time. Rick, it's been a pleasure Thank being you. here. Thanks for having me. Okay. Upbeat, ladies and gentlemen. Upbeat. Da, 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 da. I'm out of control. <laughs>
and the Wildcats on Upbeat. Ernie, thanks for playing. It was great. Oh, it's a pleasure for doing it. All right. It's a pleasure. All right. Ernie, thanks for having us. Who we got here? What is this? Mark and Mason. All right. Guitar player. This is Joe Milley. Uh, guitar players. And Mark right Foster's here, Mark right? Mark Foster right here. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Beautiful job. All right, thanks. So I just Save the day. Don't want to All right. <laughs> so why don't you tell me what you guys have been up to? Well, we've been working off a lot, off a real hard. We had a wonderful year this year. Things man upstairs, you know. He's just the good man upstairs, the Lord up there, you oh. know. Yeah, that's where you know. Him? Up. Yeah, okay. him. Thank him up there. I saw, I saw a squirrel. I thought maybe it was him. No, that ain't a squirrel we play. <laughs> so we had a great year this year, and we were very busy. Thanks to the fellas, all for one hard working guys, and it's a lot. Mark and Phil, you on all the details is where we going to do it and what we going to do and where we come from and where are we going. Yeah. Okay. They were just in Canada, right? We just uh, played their first trip to Canada. We did Toronto for a couple nights. That was fun. We went out to Chicago this year, Detroit for the first time. Uh, we're going to go on our first southern trip uh, down to uh, Ernie's hometown in Virginia, a big homecoming thing. And go down to Memphis. <laughs> and uh, we hope to have a new all-original CD uh, out in October. Excellent. And we got a couple good shows around here locally. We're going to do the BB King, Little Feet, and uh, Dr. John show pretty soon at the Starlight Theater. Oh, all right. We had a good summer. Huh? How about you, Joe? What do you have to say for yourself? I got to go uh, load the van. <laughs> see you later. All right. Well, that's it. We'll see you next time. Thanks <laughs> yeah. a lot. Thanks to Mark Foster. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Rocky. I got home. I said to Joy, turn on upbeat, damn you. Listen to the blues and enjoy the music of your people. 